You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Buffa. Only in Newsday, sources say the suspect in the deadly nail salon crash has been indicted on four counts of murder. Prosecutors say Stephen Schwally's blood alcohol content was more than twice the legal limit when he crashed into Hawaii Nail and Spa in Deer Park last month. Four people were killed, including an off-duty NYPD officer, the shop's co-owner, and two employees. Nine others were also hurt. The 64-year-old will be arraigned on Thursday. And a man accused of firing dozens of shots out of a North Massapequa apartment has pleaded guilty to gun and drug charges. Authorities say last August, 58-year-old Stephen Fergand fired shots out of his basement apartment and hit neighboring homes. Police say they found more than a dozen illegal guns and a pound of cocaine at the Sussex Avenue apartment. He's expected to be sentenced to 10 years in prison. And President Joe Biden addressed the nation today on the sixth anniversary of the Civil Rights Act. We do not celebrate these laws as part of our past, but as critical components of our future. The 46th president has three proposals. Biden is calling for a no one is above the law amendment where there would be no immunity for crimes a president commits while in office. He's also proposing a code of conduct for the Supreme Court. Justice would be required to disclose gifts, refrain from public political activity, Recuse themselves in cases in which they have, they or their spouses have a financial or other conflict of interest. Lastly, the president is calling for term limits for Supreme Court justices. Here's what Long Islanders have to say about that. Folks, I'm... I would be in favor of yes. that. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, after a certain age, as we've just seen with President Biden, Biden himself. himself. I don't think it's a good idea. I think the justices gain experience over the years, and I think the idea of the term limits will just be distracting. I like that. I think 18 years is too long. Um, it gives them too much power. I think it's worked fine all these years. I don't see any reason behind it just because they lost a couple of uh, tough decisions that they wanted to go the other way. Now, for more on this story and more on the 2024 presidential race, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV, Video box. And only in Newsday, there's another search for buried chemical drums at Beth Page Park. A new contractor is scanning the soil more than two months after another company scans failed to find six buried drums. Beth Page Community Park is the former dumping grounds for Grumman Aerospace. More than 20 concrete encased barrels were found so far at the park. And one island school district has paid millions of dollars over sexual abuse allegations. Newsday's TV's Jasmine Anderson and investigative reporter Jim Bomback have the story you'll see only in Newsday. The Herrick School District paid nearly $50 million in the past year to former students who accused administrators of not protecting them enough from sexual abuse decades ago. Newsday's Jim Bomback joins me now. You've been combing through records. What do we know about this latest round of payments? These payments ended 27 lawsuits that Herrick's faced. Uh, this was the second most uh, of any Long Island school district that faced lawsuits under the Child's Victims Act. This was the 2019 state law that offered a, uh, opened a temporary window for people who say they suffered sexual abuse as children to file lawsuits and claims previously before the law. They couldn't file lawsuits once they turned 23 years old. Were parents in the district aware of the lawsuits and the plan to make the payouts? So the district, once they faced these lawsuits, they were filed in 2020, 2021. They did make residents aware that they were facing a significant number of these lawsuits. They settled these lawsuits in the past year, kind of piecemeal, one by one every month. Uh, they closed with settlements in May and June. Then they sent a letter to residents saying, we settled these uh, lawsuits and we did so with the financial health of the district in mind. So critics have said these settlements are hurting today's students and educational programs. How are school districts making these payments? Yeah, that's a struggle because um, you know, the school boards association, the superintendent's association, they have said that they, they welcome uh, making whole people who say they suffered this abuse many, many, many years ago. But at the same time, they don't want to do it at, at, the, at the expense of today's children going to the schools. So what school districts have done, what Herricks did, is that of that nearly 50 million, they bonded 40 million of that, that they're going to pay back over 15 years. And they say that this allows them to limit the impact on today's students. How many lawsuits are still active? 
So there's about 100 lawsuits still active. We're following them all. Uh, Bayshore, uh, the district, faces the most on Long Island, more than Herricks. They faced 45 of these lawsuits. They've settled two so far. We don't know how much they paid to settle them just yet. But that leaves 43 lawsuits that we're going to be following as this next year goes on. Yeah, a lot of work still to be done. Jim, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Long Beach is taking more steps to limit beach access. The city's police commissioner and city manager can now close or restrict beach and boardwalk access without issuing a declaration of emergency. Now, this comes after a huge senior cut day party last month that ended with a shooting. And the town of Hempstead is taking steps to keep animals and residents safe after a stray cat was found with rabies. If you see a stray cat or a stray dog, don't naturally approach it if you do not know it. And if you are scratched or bit by a stray, you need to take precautions. You need to go out there and have yourself checked. Now write this down because the town is hosting a free rabies vaccination clinic on Saturday, August 24th. It will be held at the town's animal shelter. Nassau County's payroll has skyrocketed due to police spending. Sherry Einhorn has the story you'll see only in Newsday. I'm Sherry Einhorn. Did you know that roughly one third of the budget in Nassau and Suffolk goes to paying county employees and a large chunk of that goes to the police department? Nassau County paid its employees nearly $75 million more in 2023, the biggest year-over-year -year jump in the last decade. The spike in costs, according to a Newsday analysis of county payroll data obtained through the state's Freedom of Information law, is largely due to police salaries. So we asked Long Islanders, how much is too much when it comes to paying for police? They should get raises, but not the kind of raises they get. I mean, and they shouldn't be making more money than the cops in the city. There's no reason. They have a tough job. And I, and I say they're, they're worth, any, worth every penny. Nassau's PBA settled a new contract with County Exec Bruce Blakeman's administration in January. It's retroactive to 2019 with a 15 percent increase over eight and a half years. That put into effect immediately retroactive raises, bonuses, and then the step increases that they hadn't been getting for the years that they were working without one. Base salaries for some officers jumped about 50 percent in a year. No comment from Blakeman, but Nassau's PBA president tells Newsday in part, this is back pay owed for years of hard work and dedication. When you are without a contract, you'll never make up for that difference. Police officers can never be paid enough for what they do. Fiscal watchdogs blame skyrocketing costs on collective bargaining and binding arbitration. The current system is failing pretty much everyone. It's failing taxpayers because they're getting hit with much higher costs than they would otherwise. It's hitting public confidence in police forces. Essentially, the only people who are benefiting from the system are the people who are actually getting a bigger check or bigger benefits. In Suffolk, total payroll spending increased by about 16 million in the same year, with the bulk of it going to police. The Suffolk police contract doesn't expire until December, but the union could use Nassau's new numbers as a bargaining tool for negotiations. Suffolk's PBA president tells us in part, Suffolk County residents continue to get an incredible value for the tax dollars they spend on public safety. I come from a family of policemen, and uh, when I'm in trouble, that's who I call. So I feel like... More, now more than ever, their lives are on the line, and I'm, I'm for keeping up with standards and giving them raises like everybody else gets. I feel like they're giving them too much money, and they're not putting enough money into the schools. They're not putting much money into the, the daycare centers and the things like that. For Newsday TV, I'm Shari Einhorn. Now to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box.
Newsday Sports is brought to you by King O'Rourke Automotive Group. The Islands High School Quarterback Challenge has returned, and Carissa Kelman has a story you'll see only in Newsday. I've been to, like, MetLife. I've been to, like, other, like, combines. And it, honestly, I think this one might be one of my favorites. Long Island's top quarterbacks hit the turf at Smithtown West to show what they're made of in the annual Long Island Quarterback Challenge. It's just a good chance to compete before the season starts and be around a bunch of great QBs. For the third year in a row, the boys' event kicked off with an IQ test, followed by a series of eight physical drills. We're testing accuracy is a very, very paramount thing. Uh, anticipation and timing, two other critical factors. The ability to mo be mobile and make plays off script, and the ability to drive the football uh, with velocity. It's great yet to see how we work together in front of a competition, and nerves are up, but we still perform. No one really knows who I am right now. I'm going to junior year. I didn't play much last year, so it was great just like showing off, showing what I could do. I didn't make it last year, so this year, like making it, like made me feel a lot better. I didn't even have to uh, try out for it. It was definitely like, an honor. The greatest honor of the day was given to Half Hollow Hills West Joe Filardi. I've been throwing ever since season end, just like trying to get stronger, faster. While flag football season isn't until spring, we're already getting a sneak peek of our quarterbacks right now. I've been looking forward to this all summer, especially after such a great event last year. It was the second year for the girls' event, with Seville's Olivia Moynihan securing the trophy. It makes me more excited for next year and everything. And I, was, I definitely love to come here winning, so it's great that I did. And none of it is possible without the receivers, who were also recognized. I just came out here to have fun. Awesome. And I didn't think I was going to get something. <laughs> so how exciting is it then to get this award? It is, you know. Obviously, I think I got it because of my hustle. I was like all over the floor, diving for balls that were low. And I think like that's what made me stand out. At Smithtown West, Carissa Kelman, Newsday TV. Now to read more about the quarterback challenge, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Now let's take a look at your drive for now. Long Island weather. Man, it was really coming down today and it's still going to be coming down tonight. But tomorrow, it's going to be dry with partly cloudy skies. Taking a closer look at tomorrow, you can see there's no rain in the forecast, just clouds overhead. But the seven day looks a lot more wet. Take a look. You see, we have it on Wednesday and Saturday. Sunday looks like a washout, too. Long Island weather is brought to you by Sun Nation Energy, helping Long Islanders save on their energy bills for over 20 years. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us.